here. I have to hit all my buttons in the beginning because if not, be halfway through, be like, ooh, dag, that was, that was not the goal. All right, folks, <laughs> I am super excited for tonight. It's actually been about six weeks since we had a talk show just based on schedule. We do one every month, but it's not the same like Tuesday, every first Tuesday, that sort of thing. Um, but I'm really, really excited for tonight. I am your host, Sable B, founder and creator of Real Brown Girls. This is the earliest we've done a talk show. So I got loads of emails from people saying, I love you, but I'm gonna be here for the recording because a lot of folks are back in the office and depending on where you live with traffic, if you don't leave the office to 5.30 or 6 o'clock, you ain't making it home in time for a 6.30 setup. You're trying to eat, you know? You want to take off your bra. You're trying to live life. <laughs> um, so I completely understand. But that's okay because this was the day that worked for Kim's schedule. And I met Kim. Kim, when did we meet? Was that like three months ago at this point? Four months? Because the time is just a rolling. The time is rolling. It was something like that. So this year, okay, let's let's not get into specifics. That's what I get. That's right, Leslie. Cook dinner. Take care of yourselves. You got to eat. You got to hydrate. Things are happening. Um, <laughs> we met a couple of months ago, definitely this calendar year. And when I tell you Kim's energy was so contagious, um, she had the room rocking and rolling. We did a makeup class with beautiful brown girls um which was so much fun especially for someone like me who doesn't wear makeup like I own makeup but do I wear the makeup that I own no maybe about once a week when I have to record the podcast from a nine to five um and I got like it's it's such a simple setup I don't have I don't have options I was learning names of brushes the girls we had a good time that as soon as it was over let me not lie. It was at least a couple of days after it was over. I reached out to Kim. I said, Kim, I have to have you on on the show because literally her energy is electrifying. Um, like there's people that have like great energy, good energy. Like that's a, that's that's a, that's a thing, right? That's not unique. But there was something about Miss Roxy, okay, that I literally said, Oh, but I love you. You know how you meet someone. And you just immediately feel their, their energy and they give you razzle dazzle and it's authentic and it's genuine. And then I learned about her background and what she's done with her beauty brand. So not only are you literally beautiful, you are fly, you are intelligent and amazing. I was like, we have to talk to you. But I also really wanted to talk to her in particular about your beauty is enough because that was like a common thread and theme that I think kept going through the masterclass for, for makeup. Because oftentimes when you see makeup tutorials or um, just like conversations around beauty, particularly black women, sometimes it's, and it's not in every instance, but it's, it's discussed in a way as if we have to contort and conform ourselves to fit into the mold. And that was the exact opposite of everything that Kim was like, Kim was like, but if it worked for you, it worked for you, baby, don't do that. That don't work for you, but that worked for you. Oh, I see you mm, about too much. Take it back, take it back, take it back. Like that emphasis on you, you are enough and your beauty is enough. And how do we emphasize it? Not trying to change it. And I was like, I love this woman. And would, would you be on the show? So Kim, I am so excited to have you here. How was your day? How are you feeling? What's, what's going on with you? Well, I'm so happy to be here. Um, and I'm really happy to be here, right? Like there could have been a whole nother plan, right? Mm -hmm. So so I just want to take the moment to just say, I'm happy to be here. Um, and sometimes, you know, you just got to take, take a moment to just like take a deep breath and realize that here is a destination that you've reached. Mm -hmm. And so I am just so happy to be here. So let me start there. Um, and Sable, um, my day has been um, pretty good. I started off this morning at a high school. Okay. Um, speaking to young ladies um, about entrepreneurship and 
um, just some of my experiences. My story too is that I actually was kicked out of high school. Mm-hmm. And so I love to sort of share my overcoming story. Um, and so one of my customers asked me to come out to the high school. So I started my morning early this morning with a group of teenage high schoolers and we had a fabulous time together Um, and we had a chance to have a conversation Um, and I got such great feedback immediately from them Mm -hmm. on how I kept it real (laughs) yeah they don't as a former high school teacher they do not wait for feedback they'll give it to you in the moment in the moment in the moment so that's what happened this morning and then you know go to the office find out something wasn't pretty right for something I had to go make it, you know, just all the things that then start to happen. Other meetings, um, kind of got some news today that sort of redirected me mm-hmm. um, and almost like delayed me. Mm. Um, and so, but what I had to do was remember that the delay is probably is serving me. Mm. Um, and so it was, it was that too today because somebody might be on this call or somebody might be listening and you might've got hit with some delay news, you know, and sometimes it takes you a minute to sort of process that. Mm -hmm. And um, so something that I was kind of excited about, thought was going to be happening. is sort of like, "Mm, not right now. (laughs) And, uh, and, and not with a projected date in mind that another date I can get excited about. It was just kind of like, not right now. Not right now. Okay. (laughs) Period. Right. And so um, I think that too, I was kind of processing that today, but I believe that delay will serve because um, everything happens at the right time. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think so. So that's just what my day was like. I mean, I had to run it through real quick um, uh, because, you know, you asked me how I was and I want to just give you, oh, it's fine. You know, I got to give you the whole thing. I appreciate that. I've stopped saying like, Oh, I'm fine. Especially if I wasn't fine. Like I might not <laughs> pour it on you thick, depending on like, you know, where, where you are and who you're talking to. But yeah. I, I definitely appreciate just the realness and the response, because I think it's because it, you know, it's just, com- if a com- it's a conversation piece, but it's automatic response. It's how are you doing? I'm good. It's like, no, but are you really good? Cause you don't look good. You know, do you actually feel good? Tell the truth. Um, so I, when someone gives me that answer, I, first of all, I don't ask the question unless I'm ready to make space for it. That I'm right. with. But also too, I appreciate that response. And she already, like you already dropped a mic, a mic drop moment, like a delay, because when you were speaking about yours, even though you didn't give details, I thought about one of mine that should have happened, probably should have been kicked off in like February, March this year. And at this rate, it's looking like the fall. But when I think about how the first six months of the year went, it was like, oh, that was a that was the best delay that could have yeah. happened yeah. because yeah. I would have so much more time in the fall that I would not have had had it started when I thought it was going to start and I was very excited about it, especially mm-hmm. the coin associated with it. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and now I'm like, wait a minute, this is not such a bad thing overall. So, how did you get into beauty? Because everyone has like different routes. Some folks are like, I've been playing with. Um, <laughs> You don't have to apologize. You're here I know. now. I was like, Shannon, uh, if you don't just get in here. and, and <laughs> that, that was so polite. And you good, girl. You good. Yes. Um, so you on time. You were on time. You were literally on time. You know, some people are like, I've, I've played in with like makeup, you know, my mom's makeup growing up. Some people are like, you know, I watch TV and I watch the award shows and the Oscars since I was five, like, Everyone has their different ways in which they've gotten into like the beauty space. What sure. Out? Yeah. So mine just started um, when I was in college. I needed a job. I went to the mall looking for a job and I thought I was going to work at like Foot Locker or Great American Cookies or something like that. And my friend said this makeup place was hiring. I was like, I don't want to do makeup. She was like, but they hire, you know, like <laughs> back when it just mattered, like you just need a job. Right. And yeah. so, so I went and applied and then I got a call back and I was like, Ooh, okay. Um, and so I went along with it, went all the way with it, ended up getting hired. And, um, a couple, like maybe not even a month into the job, they showed us one time how to do one thing. Mm-hmm. That was it. Right about a month into the job, my, my manager comes to me and she goes, 
what are you telling these women? And I was like, what are you talking about? Mm-hmm. She was like, you selling so much makeup. You selling more makeup than me and you don't even do makeup good. So what are you, what are you telling them? And I was like, well, first of all, I'm trying. Uh, <laughs> But I was like, actually, I fell in love with making women feel good about themselves. Mm -hmm. It it satisfied me. It satisfied me to tell another woman, especially who looked like me, um, that she was beautiful and that, you know, whatever I did, listen to her story, ask her how her date was going, listen to her, like all of that. Before you know it, she got up. She's just like, give me everything you put on my face, (laughs) you know? And I think that for me, I really got into it because. I liked what the result of that experience with those women, how they felt, how it made me feel. It was fulfilling for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I just fell in love with, with, with that, with that part of it. So for me, it's not just about makeup. That's why I'm totally not like offended when people say, I, I don't wear this kind of, uh, make, I don't wear a lot of makeup. All this. And, and people just assume it because I'm in the beauty industry that I'm like, I don't know, like trying to force makeup on people. I'm like, no, like it's it's about um, wearing what's comfortable for you, mm-hmm. um, but also um, stepping outside of your box sometimes too. Like somebody also needs to be able to tell you like, you know, hey, step, you know, step it up, whatever. Sometimes they need to tell you like, ooh, that's a little too much on that, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. But I think that I'm just about like making women feel good. And I found out in the makeup industry, I could do that. So you're selling more makeup than your manager, and she had the <laughs> audacity to ask you how about my business. <laughs> Clearly, I'm, do- I'm doing what you hired me to do. So what's the problem? How do we go from I I'm in college, I need a job mm-hmm. to I'm now the owner of my own brand. I'm I know there's lots of pieces in there, but like if you could just like walk us through that trajectory, because I imagine. You genuinely needed a job because so many of us did, well, do and did. Mm-hmm. And when you first accepted it, and it was like the first face you were doing, and no, in that moment you weren't like, and I'm gonna have a beauty brand. Like in that no. moment, like I know no. it came at some point, obviously, but yeah. like, how'd you get to the I need a job to I got my home, I got my own business, I got my own brand. Yeah, I, I mean, I didn't think it was gonna turn into you know, it was just supposed to be for college. Yeah. I was supposed to be done after college. I was supposed to get a, you know, I, I got my degree in public relations. I'm supposed to get an offer. Mm-hmm. I'm supposed to go work at a public relations firm, but I had no internship because I only worked at the makeup counter. And so um, I had no setup for any jobs. Mm-hmm. So it, it's not until my senior year when it was about to be like my second semester, my senior year. And my parents are kind of like, okay, what are we doing? What are we, what are we doing that? <laughs> you know? And I'm kind of like, Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm coming back. I'm coming. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you in a minute. <laughs> you know, uh, kind of thing. And that same manager said to me, "You can do this yourself. You should open up your own makeup shop." Come on, manager. And I was like, "That manager has grown on me." I was questioning them before, but now, now I'm like, "Come on, manager." I was like, "You think so?" And she was like, "Yeah." She was like, "Yeah." And I remember going to go tell my mom. And my oldest sister, and they didn't really refuse what I said. And, and I was like, hmm, okay. And I just remember going home, having my sort of like come to Jesus moment, having that moment where you're just like, Lord, I don't know what, you know, it's like that crossroads moment and you just crying and praying and hoping for a miracle to kind of show up because I also knew that meant like money and stuff, you know, stuff that I just like didn't have. Yeah. And, um, and so I saw this vision uh, for this makeup store. And I was like, you know what? We don't have a place in Houston. Um, Cause I was in Atlanta. I went to Clark Atlanta University. And I was like, we don't have a place in Houston that celebrates black beauty. Mm-hmm. I mean, we didn't, I mean, and it was plenty of black folks in Houston. Yeah. I was like, yeah. but, but we didn't have a place where black beauty was celebrated. We didn't, I was like, black women were still going to the nail shop and getting their eyebrows done. I was like, you gotta that be a better yeah, I was like, I was like, it gotta be a better way, you know, like that we all go in there and get our eyebrows butchered, you know. And um they were doing like lashes in Atlanta. I was like, we can be doing lashes. Like I, I was like, you know what, let, maybe I can. And so then that's when my second semester of my senior year, I started saving up my money and my mom gave me five hundred dollars and 
um, right after I graduated from college, I opened up my first makeup shop in Houston. And um, whew, uh, when I opened up the gates of that store, I just remember it because I got it, a space inside the mall. Mm-hmm. When I opened up that space in the mall, I just remember um, that was the end of my money. I saved up $10,000. My mom gave me 500. I had saved up $9,500. My mom gave me 500. And I saved me 10. Okay. And I opened up the store and I had no more money left. I had, you know, the fixtures, the this, the that, everything, all the supplies. And um, I had to go to the food court and talk a woman into coming down to my store, which was pretty far from each other. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's how I started to build my clientele. I started doing women's eyebrows and makeup and all of that. And I ran that makeup shop for 14 years. Come on, testimony. And then I got to um, my, in 2018, I decided um, that there was a, a, number one, that nobody was going to create this clean, non-toxic makeup line for Black women, for South Asian women, for just women who were not beige. And I was like, um, no, like, I was, I was just thinking like, I got to do this now. I got to do it online so you can reach everybody. Mm-hmm. And so um, I closed down a fully functioning store that was, you know, a good small business that was taking care of my lifestyle and my family. And I, I don't know what I was thinking. I was just heard. <laughs> I heard a voice from God. I was like, you know, it's just like this, like faith mood. I had faith mood. I had faith. <sighs> And I remember telling someone and having a conversation with someone, I said, I'm going to make the makeup line for 2020. Mm-hmm. And um, I went out to Austin and got into the tech community and started building this e-commerce, you know, beauty tech enabled brand. And we were due to launch March 2020. And we know what March 2020, what happened in March 2020. Then but I, yeah. yeah, but I was prepared for it because yeah because I closed down what would not have worked in the pandemic what would not have worked in the pandemic was that makeup shop I had that would not have worked at all because you had to be six it was like no six feet and uh, and I couldn't imagine having a team that I gotta make you you know like first of all it's shut down for a while period you couldn't even go to work but then if you try to go to work you still could contract something that could kill you like I just you know, just thinking about all of that, I just wouldn't have been in the right mind space. I would have been tore up. You know, I just wouldn't have, that wouldn't have worked for me. You know what I mean? Like, and um, we were heavy on services. So, you know, people would come in and get their eyebrows done, their lashes done, their makeup done. But I don't have a long enough arm to do that from six feet away. Exactly. <laughs> it's just not going to work. It's not happening. <laughs> so if I would have stayed with that business, if I wouldn't have, and, and I have to make my little testimony, you know, if I wouldn't have followed and been obedient to the voice of God, I would have been behind. And absolutely, because that's two crossroad moments. It's you're about to graduate and your people asking you what you're about to do. And you're like, hold on now. I don't let me let me get back. To you. What, what's corporate speak? Let me circle back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then you had someone that spoke essentially life into into you and then someone else is like validating that and like it was wonderful you you ran with it you had a 14-year shop and I don't think people like this courage that required you to go I'm gonna save my money I'm gonna open up this shop like that was mm-hmm. great that was a courageous crossroad moment there but then the courage to go I'm gonna shut down a successful shop like that's another crossroad moment but talk about delay and delivery granted this wasn't a delay but like preparation that you didn't even see like foresee in that moment because no one knew that this was going to go down March 2020. No, no one. No, no. All I saw, but it's, but I was building an e-commerce business because I did notice, and this is the reason why if you're in business or just working at a company, yes, so you can be valuable. When you see different trends happening, you do have to pay attention and make decisions yes. accordingly. Yeah. I did see the trend of online happening I did see where like I wanted to launch this makeup line and in order for me to do it it was like yeah you can launch it with your store but it's going to get blurry because people are just going to think it's local and da, 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 da. so I could just see that you know and I was like no nah, it got to be online you know and I was like 
I got to really go all the way with this online thing. Not like, you know, man, you know, like, mm-hmm. slow, I got to, I got to get, I got to go in the deep water with this. And that's something else that sometimes we sort of shy away from. It's kind of like, oh yeah, I'm going to try, but I'm not going to go all the way. And I just had to go all in. Like and a to be, like a yeah, 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 yeah. And, um, I had some, I had some hard days. I, to be honest, when the pandemic hit in 2020, I was like, y'all, I've been going through a pandemic for the past two years after I closed my store. Like, I had a personal pandemic. I had a personal pandemic. Like, I, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. It was, it was pretty rough. I mean, um, you have to imagine I let go of, you know, any revenue. I mean, just all of that stuff. I mean, just, everything the the persona that I had I mean yep everything that went along with what it was I abandoned all of that Mm -hmm. to pursue this vision of I gotta get this e-commerce thing going and like you said I didn't know it was a pandemic coming but I did see the the trends and the things that were moving and happening um but I definitely didn't see the the pandemic as being the acceleration (laughs) yeah it's it's fed a couple people up a little bit it slowed a couple of people down, depending yeah. on you know which side of the spectrum yeah. that, that they they were on at the time. Now I know you said when you when you first started working at the makeup counter, like you it was fulfilling for you because you enjoyed making women feel you know just good about mm-hmm. themselves, and it wasn't necessarily about like makeup. I'm about to make up something, y'all. But you know how like every um, you know foundation and mascara like it has the code. It's like Foxy Brown too, or like yeah, yeah. Mama One, like whatever. Yeah. Like, you know, you enjoyed making people feel good about themselves. And that's yeah. what was fulfilling. And obviously it was fulfilling that it sustained you to work yeah. on you know, your own business for, for 14 years. Yeah. When you were in this transition prepar- preparation period, if you will, how did you maintain, like, I need to pivot focus because I'm spotting the trends and, you know, I want to stay ahead and not fall behind it in that way but also like maintain that thread of I still want women to feel beautiful even if they're not walking into my shop being greeted by me and folks who work you know who work for me how did you maintain that in this space because it is a common thread for you like I want you to feel beautiful not because I want you to feel that because you are beautiful and I need you to know you're beautiful yeah exactly I'm just trying to affirm it right Mm -hmm. Lamique Lamique actually is an acronym that stands for love and makeup and kindness Love and kindness is your true makeup because beauty is revealed and not applied. So um, that you is. You tambourine to just a little. <laughs> you remind me, I need to order me a tambourine. I want a tambourine so bad. Thank you for reminding <laughs> me. Uh, <laughs> I got to see if it's a black owned business that still one. Um, so so I, um, I think that for me, like it's about maintaining it's almost like, you know, what we have to realize is that like that passion, that love that I have for women, it's real. It's like real. You know what oh, I mean? It's, it it's comes just, from your pores. Yeah. It's just real. It's just like, it's just what it is, you know? And so for me, I wanted to scale it. Mm-hmm. I wanted to go beyond where I was. It's mm-hmm. almost like I wanted to go beyond the four walls that I was in and I wanted to take it out to the world. And I knew to take it out to the world, that meant online. So I can get it out to the world. So for me to maintain that, it's, it's, it's just been the same. Every decision I make is, is really out of love and kindness. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so everything I do, every decision I make, my activities, um, it's, 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 it stems from that. So um, how I maintain it is just, it's just basically, you know, as a founder, I continually come up against opposition. And so um, I know that we need this and, and, and that we deserve this. And so I continue to fight through to get it. I was, I didn't have this like in my list of questions to ask you, um, but since you just threw the word opposition to the space, mm-hmm. I want to just like probe you just a little bit there because oftentimes I find that there's this I don't want to say misunderstanding, but almost misconception. So it's like you go to school and by school, I mean like graduate from college or you went to like a vocational type school, you're in a professional setting, whatever that might be, whether you went the traditional, non-traditional route. 
And, you know, you're like, oh, I'm dealing with racism. I'm dealing with sexism. I'm dealing with ageism as a black mm-hmm. woman. I'm over mm-hmm. it. They're not paying me enough. They haven't mm-hmm. promoted me or they took two cycles too long to promote me. You know, mm-hmm. common refrains and stories and experiences that enough of us have that we should mm-hmm. not have. And yeah. then like the go-to solution is, well, I'm going to go into business by myself because then I won't have to deal with none of that. Mm. <laughs> And I often find myself saying, I'm not saying you are going to deal with it all day, every day, but it doesn't, you know, you don't like transform your black womanness in on the entrepreneurial side. Like you will still deal with opposition. It might sound different. It might feel a little different, but like Mm -hmm. opposition still exists. Mm -hmm. So maybe it wasn't racism or sexism or even like ageism or or what have they, what have it for you. Like what Mm -hmm. opposition have you navigated once you went into this, like the entrepreneurial space, but then going e-commerce. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I just talked to the young students at the school about ageism that I experienced when I wanted to open up my makeup shop, just a makeup shop in the mall. They wouldn't rent to me. Mm-hmm. They told me I looked like a kid. Um, and I was 21 and um, they, w- they were not taking me serious. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so um, I have dealt with, I mean, the statement you made mm-hmm. is actually out. I'm sorry, it's a little bit of a myth. We we deal with the same thing as entrepreneurs and founders. We deal with the same thing. Mm-hmm. So, um, ageism, sexism, racism, we deal with it. It's 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 on it's on both sides. To be honest, the difference I think with entrepreneurship is that I maybe get to be. You know, I always say I'm an activist first, <laughs> beauty founder second. So, like I I get to probably do a lot around it and have more voice to it and maybe you know da 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 uh but it's still the same thing we're experiencing the same thing we it's you know 0.006% of black women raise venture capital mm-hmm. so that means the whole 100% because that's less than 1% that means the whole 99.99.99% of people uh or they don't look like those that white men are raising the venture capital and they're creating big businesses mm-hmm I'm so glad you said that because it is like, a, like, I'm just going to go run my own business and then I won't have to deal with X, Y, Z. It's like, mm. actually, you will. <laughs> actually, you will. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you just might get to um, choose how big you want your business. You can have a flourishing six figure business that takes care of your lifestyle and your family. And, and you can get paid by, you know, folks that can appreciate you. And, you can do that and and be good. I think that's a good and have your sanity and your your dignity. Yeah. I think that I think that's, that's amazing. Solid. I mean, that's amazing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, you can do that. I mean, I remember Aretha Franklin saying, and and because when I had my makeup shop, black people are only people that were really paying me. Yeah. So I, I I owe nothing else to anybody else. You know. So um, um, I remember when Aretha Franklin said what she said, like black. Black folks paid her and some like like just basically saying like black folks paid me, you know, yeah. like like you know, in that same way I felt it wasn't until I got into e-commerce, to be honest, that mm-hmm. I've ever been in all white environments. Mm. I had my makeup shop. I will say, depending on what kind of business you want to do, um, but I remember my makeup shop though was in a white area in Houston. It was the most affluent neighborhood in Houston. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's why a lot of people looked at me as successful here in town, um, because my makeup shop was there after I moved it from the mall. Um, um, and, um, I was there for 10 years and white folks would come in there and, and then feel like they didn't feel like they, you know, I don't, I didn't feel like home or whatever. And they would leave, even though it was right in their neighborhood. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, um, I think that, you know, you still deal with it, but I do think you can make certain choices in your business of who your consumer is and stuff like that. And maybe you don't have to deal with it as much. Yeah. Cause when I did have my store, I, I, I was, all I did was please black women. So, you know, no big deal. Mm-hmm. Um, but then when I went this e-commerce route and because I also want to build, I want to build a high growth company. It's not that I have to stop pleasing black women because we spend nine times more on beauty products. Um, we spend 80% more on beauty products than our counterparts. So it's not that, I, that you know, it's like I'm still not in a position. No, I'm still pleasing Black women, Brown women. However, 
there is a um, a bigger um, a lens, a bigger spotlight being put on me um, because my makeup can really be used by any woman. Yeah. And so, you know, people who are not in a, you know, mindset um, that see my product as equal, then I, I have people wearing it from all different backgrounds of life. Um, and so, you know, and then when I want to build an e-commerce, a lot of times in the tech industry, because the people who sometimes can afford to take time to go build tech companies are people who, who, who have the financial resources and all that. Sometimes those are the folks that we're working with and stuff like that. So it's just different, different yeah. other things, the programming, you know, who's putting together the programs, the the finances, um, but I'm happy too to be a part of, you know, some really great organizations like Div Inc., which mm-hmm. is a, a black founded company. Um, that was my first tech accelerator that I went through that I can credit for even bringing me into the tech industry. Um, and then from there, you know, I've done some others, but every tech accelerator I was in when I was in Austin, I was the only black woman. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, and but I, I was not used to that. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I had a huge, um, I had a huge, uh, how can I say it? Problem adjusting. Uh, cause I, I didn't, I wasn't used to that and I wasn't used to people hold on to every word I said or feeling like I'm speaking for the whole community. I'm like, so many black women were so different. Like, you know, like I'm Kim, I can speak to what I have observed and what I know. But unfortunately, I do not possess the thoughts and opinions and deep perspectives of every single last one of us within the country, much less the diaspora in the world. Um, And that's a real thing that people have to navigate far too often. And it's absolutely ridiculous. And that's what I got stuck with, right? (laughs) Is, is, yeah. And and I mean, just everything. And just, you know, you know, I'm like, we're so different. Like, it's just, are you kidding me? But but, but that was, I didn't know people, I didn't even realize people did not have people of other shades as real friends, not just like coworkers, you know, I mean, like real friends, people that come to your house and stuff like that. And in Austin, I started to get into deeper relationships with, um, with, with white friends and I would come to their house and stuff and they come to find out like they never went that deep with people before. Mm-hmm. And it's just, and, and, and it's just, just so interesting it speaks i mean there's the racism if you will um (laughs) it it speaks to the dynamics of some of the questions that people come across far too often i'm pretty sure like if we knew every black woman in the country trying to navigate all the countries might be might be a lot like we had like a working google doc and everyone could just like insert like frequently asked questions by white folks engaging with black folks for like the first time beyond level one and like Here's the question. It's beyond Here's- level one for me. It's the beyond level one. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like seriously, beyond the water cooler at work in office, beyond happy hour. Like these, these are the questions that you don't need to ask them. I swear, just read this 100 page document and you will be fine. This doesn't mean you get an invitation to the cookout though, just for the record. Um, I might pack you a to-go plate and I'll pass it to you all outside of the tents, but exactly. um, I don't know if I'm inviting you to the dance floor. I digress. <laughs> let me focus. Let me, let me focus. So what have you experienced? And so in this e-commerce space, and like you said, you know, love and kindness is the bedrock of, of the brand, um, mm-hmm. you know, when it comes to the work that you do. In this, when you were transitioning into this new space, or, at, or as you've been in this new space since March of 2020, like what have you seen been trends with Black women in particular? Like saying, no, like, babe, I need you to know, like, you fly, like, you're gorgeous. You know, this is mm-hmm. how, have, how have you navigated that with e commerce? Because I can imagine that conversation being slightly different because, yeah, you know, you're not literally sitting, well, standing there beating someone's face. It's like, <laughs> You're speaking to a group of women. You're hosting an online class. You're, you know, you're, you're, you're fulfilling orders for folks who who are purchasing from you. So, like, how how have you found pouring into folks, but in the e in the e in the online world, so to speak? Yeah, for sure. Um, one, the first Friday of April, twenty twenty, 
Mm-hmm. I turned on my camera on Friday night on Facebook. And I was like, welcome to Friday Night Live. <laughs> and hey. I started, I started, I would have, I got a speaker and I brought it in my daughter's room, which turned into my whole studio and my whole office. I took over my daughter's room. She's four years old at the time. And that's why we call her boss lady. Cause she re- literally thinks I pay her rent to be in this room. Um, Cause I took over her room to turn it into, you know, my space. And I turned on the speaker, I put on some music mm-hmm. and I literally started screaming. It's Friday night live. Get on here. Let's go. We're going to get about to be the best makeup party ever. And I just started, I came on with a blank fake, you know, with no makeup on, mm-hmm. start doing my eyebrows, showing people how I deal with hair loss and, I don't have no eyebrows on the end. I'm like, look, and I use this brow duo. This is what I use right here, you know, and started showing them how to apply it. And, you know, so about a week after the pandemic hit, I sent out a survey uh, to the mailing list that we had built up to get ready to launch and asked them, you know, how can we help you? How can we support you? What's going, basically what's going on in your life? And there's a couple more sports choice questions. And about 90% of those people said, I'm I'm having to work from home, yeah, right? Yeah. Like I'm having to be at home. I'm having to work from home. I'll say 80% because then there was another like 15% that were like, I'm frontline workers. I'm a frontline worker. And then we had like a 5% that were like, I'm still, you know, um, having to go out, you know, you know, and work or what have you um, and, and, and do different things. Like, and so there, there was this large group of folks who had to work from home who now had to get on Zoom and everything and had to like do their makeup themselves, you know? Yeah, and like so, it's different than when you're in the same room with each other than when you're at home with your own lighting source. <laughs> and all you see is this. All right? you see is this. We don't get to do the shoe thing, you know, everything else I that makes up. distract you with the other stuff. All you seeing is mug, you know, like it's <laughs> like, oh, okay, <laughs> you know? And so... That was something that I realized. So I said on Friday Night Live, I'm about to show you how to do your face. I did my whole face on Friday Night Live. I started selling stuff I had here. Next thing you know, the next Friday night, turn the camera back on. Mm-hmm. And I started this Friday Night Live and I'm on there, girl, you are gorgeous. I'm giving them everything I would do in person, mm-hmm. um, even through the comments. Cause I can see your little profile picture, you know, people telling different things in the chat, what they dealing with, what they suffering from, what they skin or what the issue is. Um, and this and that. I can't get my brows done. I don't even know how to do, you know, all of that stuff. And I'm giving it out and they ask me questions and they going in on the chat. And that started something called Friday Night Live. And we've been running it for two years now. We'll say two years now because uh, it is 2022. Every Friday night, um, I do it. Um, and I've been doing it every Friday night since that first Friday of April, 2022. I love the, not just the commitment, but the pivot, because I imagine when you were preparing to launch, you weren't preparing to launch in a pandemic. So mm-hmm. some strategies had to change. Like, obviously it was still going to be online things because I mean, it's e-commerce at the same time, you didn't know that your, your customer, your ideal customer was now going to be stuck the, for the most part, stuck in the house. Mm-hmm. The first stage of lockdown, of course, every state did their own thing. We're not going to even go into that. That's not why we're here. We're not public health officials. We're going to stay out of that today. But the idea of like, no, I had a, I had a crossword. I heard from God. Mm-hmm. I'm being diligent. And then you sometimes you're like, well, hold up. When when you spoke to me, you ain't mentioned this <laughs> pandemic though. Like you you failed to mention this very large variable. <laughs> this very large thing. Cause I thought I was gonna launch at um South by Southwest. Okay. And I had some augmented reality. I, we licensed this augmented reality on our website for you to virtually try on the brow duo. But I thought I was gonna show people that all in person. You know, it was gonna yeah, be it was like this whole thing. Commerce, but you still launch in person. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so much for that um but like the the commitment to the love and the kindness and the pouring into people I think that what basically what I'm hearing is it's authentic and I knew it was authentic from the first time you opened your mouth with the uh, with the uh the makeup (laughs) with beautiful brown girls like I felt it it was there I was like oh (laughs) she down she 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 with the people um but like (laughs) 
really <laughs> leaning into for folks who want to do side projects because I tell people I got a full-time job there's no shame like I'm not sitting here pretending that I don't um for people who want to go full-time with entrepreneurship it's like you really need to like what you do because those variables come the delay you got earlier the delay I got in February the variable that homie did not mention when he tried, when he spoke life into you, you're like, that's not what you had said, though. <laughs> that's not what. That's not what we discussed. Uh, <laughs> like, um, and how committed you have to be to to persevere and to pivot. Yeah. Um. And 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 not lose sight of the love and the kindness or whatever like those bedrock pillars would be for someone. It's been yeah. two, it's been over two years. What's been What's been your biggest learning moment um, since since you launched? When you you know you had augmented reality and then our reality was augmented. Like what what has <laughs> been your biggest learning moment or just like favorite moment out of the last two two years? You say a favoring moment, favorite moment or learning moment. You can pick okay. Them. You can do both. Okay. Okay. Um, and I'll say this too to add on what you said. You said you know I think that it's a lot around liking what you do sometimes I'm kind of like, mm, but we feel them, right? Yeah, for the most part, like you, you're not gonna like it every day. I'm like, you know, the new thing that I think about lately is really love who you're doing it for. You know, like- Yes, say that yeah. again, say that again. <laughs> to really love who you're doing it for. That's the difference. Screw what I said, scratch it from the record. <laughs> Listen to Kim. <laughs> that, that. I can't you know, know what you. That's a big difference. <laughs> You know, because to be honest, you know, I know it feels like for us that making our own self happy and all that, but we're so fickle. Like we're so, one minute is like this, it, but you notice when you make other people feel a certain way, you know, it just does something for you a lot of times. And, and I just say that because, you know, yeah. It is, it is, it is, it is, it, even for your own self, I would like, mm, it's an easier way to live life than this. <laughs> you know? Do I really want to do this? <laughs> yeah, it's like, mm, this is, this is tough. You know, like, you know, yeah. and, and it's, but then it's like, what am I doing it for? I'm, I, you know, I'm like sent here on earth to, to probably do what I'm doing. You know what I mean? So it's just that, that part, but you know, my favorite, my learning, I mean, my learning really has come from my daughter. Mm -hmm. Boss lady. Boss lady. Yes. Boss lady has literally produced me for the past two years. Like literally been my producer. Like whatever, you know, producers do for shows, whatever they do for their talent, you know, that producer, my daughter has literally produced me. And um I have to listen. Because she <laughs> she she know. It's like she be knowing, you know, she just know. It's like she tell me to do this at that moment. Okay, come do this, you know. And she's so avid about it. And she's, you know, she act like she on a mission, you know, like. Because da -da -da. she is on a mission. She is on a mission. She is. On a mission. She is. She is. She is. You, you are totally right. So I won't even say act. Yes, yeah, she's on a mission. And she's actually named after my mother, mm -hmm. um, Loretta, and my husband's mother, Janelle. So she's um, Loretta Janelle. And my mom passed in 2014. My daughter uh, came in 2015. And so she was named after my mother. Me and my mother were best friends. Like the ancestral mission at that? I mean, she's, she's on an ancestral mission. Definitely. Mm -hmm. So that has been my big learning thing. And I would encourage anybody because, you know, from mothers out there, sometimes we put so much on ourselves because I was just having this conversation with another friend of mine who's an entrepreneur plus has a job, you know, and a full-time job. And she was just like, can with my son. I don't know if I'm missing out on, you know, she just kind of was, you know, having a lot of mom guilt. And I was, and I was sharing with her, you know, one thing I noticed, because everybody's situation is different. I said, but one thing I noticed with my daughter, I was like, she tells me when it's time to like do certain things or be with her or whatever they, you know, it is. And I was like, you know, they are, they are here and they know more than us. Our kids actually know more than us. And my biggest learning curve um, has been to relax. I'm trying to like just tell my daughter what to do 
and me actually listen to her. Um, and we sort of, you know, kind of go through like that. Because if I actually think about my mom, my mom was not a, my mom wasn't a, a, a harsh parent. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was kicked out of high school. I got my tongue pierced. I got tattoos. Like, I, I did my thing. You okay? was living right. I was, yeah, a little too young to be living, but, you know, I was I was living. I was living. Living. <laughs> I was living. But my mom, I, but my mom never cussed me out about it. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, it just, she just didn't show that kind of discipline, even though I probably, the things I was doing probably was ready for that, you know? <laughs> um, but. I just say that to say that there's a lot of of, of victory and patience. And uh, I'm learning that victory um, in, you know, being my daughter's mother. Um, And so that's been my big learning thing. She has, she has helped me so much. And then I would say my favorite thing Mm -hmm. also kind of comes back to uh, my daughter and it's being able to, I didn't know it was going to happen like this because we know the pandemic's going to happen, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my daughter, since she's been born in 2019, I took 63 flights. So I've always been on the go. Like, what airline you fly? Everybody. And I, part of me said she not gonna say United. She not gonna say Delta. She gonna say everybody. But you got you got points all around. Okay, that was, points all around because yeah. people try to say this one. I don't like this one. Let me tell you something. I have been delayed, canceled. Everything on every one of them. So I, I can't, when sometimes even when I hear people on the flight, some get you know delayed or something. They like, oh, that's why I don't fly to get. I'm like, it, this happens everywhere actually. Uh, <laughs> uh, so um, I used to be a big Southwest person. I still am. Uh, you know, I'm still because I like them because you can change. So if something's going right, you know, I'm an entrepreneur. If something start going right, I need another meeting. I need to be able to change my flight. But with COVID now, you can change. Everybody got to let go of their change fee. So which is amazing. Um, but, um, I fly everybody. So I got points everywhere. Um, <laughs> um, so, hey, Tiffany, there's a lot of victory hey, and patience. Hey, Tiffany, yeah. dropping mics the whole time. You just got to Tiffany, have <laughs> Tiffany, um, yes, that is, that is the thing. So my favorite thing has been that I can actually show people a different way to mother. Mm. like just be something different and 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 having to live it out loud because you know I've been at you know the past two years I've been at home now my travel schedule is starting to pick up again but again just just my daughter being around and not shooing her and we just doing it together like she she's my co-host for Friday Night Live and because she wouldn't leave the room so it was just like okay you here so let's go Let's come go. on, she, talent slash producer. Okay, come on. And then she leaves and like, you got it from here, you know, kind of thing. And, uh, but I think it's, I think it's ministry happening in that. I can't tell you exactly whatever, but I just think it is because we sometimes get held down by the mom guilt, by the whatever of what we're supposed to be, what motherhood is supposed to look like. And, um, for, you know, just because of the pandemic, I'm kind of living out loud what it looks like for me and what's going on and i'm thinking like what motherhood is supposed to look like what womanhood is supposed to look like what black womanhood is supposed to look like and then you can layer on like southern black womanhood versus like west you know it can get a lot of supposed to supposed to supposed to and then that's the recipe for frustration um for for anyone ken i'm gonna give you this last question Mm-hmm. And everyone has to go eat dinner. Leslie might be finished cooking by now, but you know, no pressure, Leslie, if you're not. Um, <laughs> Leslie, what you got? Give me so some much. Put it to the chat. What are you chefing up or have you chefed up since we started? Seriously. Okay, like give me inspiration because I don't want none of those leftovers in that refrigerator. I know. Sometimes yeah. you feel like you need food inspiration. You feel like, yeah, what, you like what, what you eating over there? Yeah. See if it like stirs up my spirit a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Wish I could tell you it was something interesting, but it's not. <laughs> what Bow is it, Leslie? Bowtie pasta with pesto over it. That's it. <laughs> oh, see, you got a sexy noodle, Leslie. Don't play it down. Yeah, you know, yeah. standard spaghetti noodle. You said, I'm going to give you a bowtie pasta. Yes, it was bowtie. Yeah, the, the yeah. pesto didn't come out as, as well as I would have liked, but it, it was good. So 
Yeah. Little bit of pesto pasta, pesto pasta. There you go. Well, you actually inspired me because you made me realize I did have leftover pasta that my friend meal prepped for me. She brought it to me on Sunday. And I totally forgot about that. So thank you. See, you feel good because it's Tuesday. You better. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, it's my I'm pleasure. Good. Look at you feeding the community, Leslie. One bow pie, one bow tie pasta dish at a time. Okay, pesto pasta. Let me focus. Okay, last. Oh wait, Shannon in the chat. Let me focus. Hold on. Baked. Oh, oh, baked chicken, cabbage, and sweet rolls. All right, now, Shannon. It's a sweet roll for me. I was gonna say she heavy as sweet roll. <laughs> it's, it's definitely the sweet roll for me. Um. Okay, I really need to stay focused. I'm looking at the clock because clearly Kim and I are ready to go eat. Um, Kim clearly. knows what she's eating now. I'm going to have the sweet roll inspiration, but I think I have some of those in this house. So we might we might be doing something here. But all right, this is a, we're entering into a world that will exist one day. It's kind of like a utopia style question. It's a bit hyper, it's a bit dramatic, but you know, melodramatic more so, but with your mission, with your brand, with your beliefs, you have like whatever the biggest stadium in this country is. I have no idea for the record. You might know. It's, I feel like it's a snapple fact, but whatever the biggest stadium is in this country, it is filled, filled, not filled. It is filled with Black women, all ages, our young baby girls, whether they're talking, strapped to somebody's chest, you know, starting pre-K, whatever it is. It is filled with us. And maybe we got some like pesto pasta and baked chicken and fried chicken and candy yams and all the jazz um, being passed around the streets. Like we don't do hot dogs and corn, y'all. We do sweet rolls and we do the good, the good stuff. What would you, what would be, what would you tell them when it comes to like their beauty? What, what would you share with them if you had, you know, 10,000, 20, like whatever that number is all smushed into a stadium? Look at fly, by the way. We might not be in our Sunday's best, but we, we can't dress to impress. Madame Kim Roxy, what would you share with us if you had us for that moment? Um, that you are the architect that has built the symbolism of beauty. And that, you know, it is, it is by your design. Hmm. You know, that that all um, that all are inspired by. Um, and if we can um, if we can persevere um, our lineage, our generations to come, um, we'll persevere too. Um, and then, you know, I think there's like this thing where we are building upon, building upon. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that I, I, I think we need to go back and research sometimes because mm -hmm. we think that sometimes we can get carried away and we think it started with us. Like when we just look at our mama and our grandma, but you need to see what great grandma. I remember my, my, my mother telling me that her grandmother, who I reminded her of her grandmother, so feisty. She was like, she's about your height, my complexion, you know, she, and it, that always stuck with me. You know, it, I didn't meet her or anything like that, meet her grandmother. But that always stuck with me that I was feisty and that I was, you know, ready. It was almost like my mom telling me, yeah, you, you know, and I think that we, we have to remember that, like, mm -hmm. like go back a little bit, stop just being okay with only knowing what you see, go back some, mm -hmm. so you can get a, 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 a historical data on what you will become. And I, I, I believe that wholeheartedly. It's the architect for me. It's the, <laughs> it's the historical data. It's the, but what you, how is your great grandma and you similar or your great, great grandmother and you similar? And, and you know, though, I just, yeah. I, Maybe yeah. my next e-commerce, first of all, I don't have an e-commerce adventure, but maybe my first one would be like bottle up Kim spirit and like and just spray it on people in the streets and, and then just see the world just shift. And then there'll be air fresheners of Sable because <laughs> you, my sister, have a certain fragrance about yourself 
uh, that is sweet to the to the smell. That's sweet to the you know. I've never even met you in person. Let's go on record and saying that. Yeah. And I feel like I have been in your presence and smelt you know your fragrance before. Um, so I believe, you know, and I would say it's almost a floral fragrance because what you're doing and how you allow others to plant their seeds on the side of you and sort of grow this garden, you know, is, is one, uh, that is, uh, that's special. So thank you, Sable. You got a mule goosebumpy over here. <laughs> I don't have a tambourine in this house, but I got a keyboard downstairs and I will hit a chord, y'all, because we're in Baptist church. Okay. <laughs> um, but let me focus. It is it is half past the hour. Folks gotta eat their sweet rolls. We gotta heat, we gotta heat up the pastas that our friend made us. Where can we stay in contact with you? How can we find you so folks who are here live but also who will see the replay to engage with you? Talk, talk to us. Where we at? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm, um, please go to um, our Instagram page at Lamique Beauty. Um, we're there, L-A-M-I-K-B-E-A-U-T-Y. Um, also go to LamiqueBeauty.com and sign up. Like as soon as you go on there, you should get a 15% off. Uh, you should be able to take advantage of a 15% off coupon. Um, your power lies in your vote and in your dollar. So make sure you, you use it wisely. So go to LamiqueBeauty.com and get that 15% off coupon and get you some lip gloss, some brow products, some mascara, some brow gel. Girl, go get it. Um, and then personally, um, if you ever just want to send me a message, um, you know, uh, you turn to your left, you turn to your right. You're like, I ain't got nobody. I feel like ain't nobody holding me up. Send me a message. Um, I'm uh, on Instagram at the Kim Roxy, T-H-E-K-I-M-R-O-X-I-E. Um, if you ever need some opportunities, you like nothing shake, feel like it's shaking in my business right now. Kim, do you know about anything? I'll send you, you know, any material or information or um, opportunities that I know about because they come across my desk a lot. Um, I'll send them to you. So, so yeah, just connect with me there and let's just become in relationship and in community. And um, with your organization, say, well, let's go deeper, you know, like let's continue you know, other ways that Lamit can be a part and I can be a part, I would love to. So um, keep keep me involved. I, and, no, and we're looking for love. content. And also too, I just want to put out there, we're looking for content creators too. So anybody into all that kind of stuff, uh, please DM us. So yes, Sable. I know it too. So let me, hold on. Let me get my old school, I'm get my post it. And I got to yeah, write it yeah. down. Because <laughs> if I don't write it down, it ain't happening. Um, do, 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 do content this is why a script should be taught because you write faster when you loop it all together than when yes. you know, the word the letters are separated but i digress that's not why we're here folks at lamique beauty lamiquebeauty.com at kim roxy there was some mic drop moments the recording will be ready in four to six weeks we got holidays and things coming up so you know as soon as it's available it, soon as you will know i was about to sing as soon as i get home but i can't sing so i'm gonna let faith heaven <laughs> I'm going to let her, that's her ministry. I, I, need, I need to stay in my lane. Um, and I'm very, very excited for next month. We're going to be talking to Brittany Oliver's Lemons to Lemonade. And if anyone mm -hmm. with Beyonce fan when the Lemonade album dropped, that is not where her name came from. But to put it this way, she applied to, I think it's like over 30 jobs or so black woman before she got hired again. And then she still had her thing on the side that was sustaining her amazing story we're gonna talk about that leslie enjoy your pesto pasta enjoy them sweet rolls shannon kim enjoy your pasta i'm gonna go i, I got sweet rolls in here somewhere so i'm about to go dig in my cupboards do yeah my cupboards or do they say cabinets you're you're very born in 80 in the 80s right <laughs> <laughs> I know what a cupboard is i know what you're talking about i know what you're talking about love you all bye <laughs> Good night, y'all. <laughs>